Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I'm going to be discussing pro sports teams that barely existed. Yes, it is the rare phenomenon of a city getting a pro sports team and then subsequently losing that team within a few years, or in some cases, within one year. This, of course, would never happen today, but it did happen a ton in the NFL back in the 1920s and 30s, along with all of the other sports. I have examples of every major sport in North America, beginning with the Seattle Pilots, who only existed in 1969 at one of the worst stadiums baseball has ever seen, Six Stadium. They were a member of the American League. In 1970, the franchise moved to Milwaukee, and that is what became the Milwaukee Brewers that we know today. One of the reasons that Seattle originally had gotten an MLB team in 1969 was due to the minor league success that the city had. However, due to the horrible stadium situation, playing at Six Stadium, along with the pilots being terrible. I mean, you think it's kind of ridiculous giving a city one season, but the history of Six Stadium, it had not been played in in five years and was sold to the city of Seattle, who did a very bad job upkeeping it from 1964 to 1969, and the attendance problems were not surprising considering the stadium renovations that they had to rush in January of 1969, the pilots' only season, they weren't even fully complete by opening day. The scoreboard wasn't even fully up, and they only had just under 20,000 seats originally. They ended up being forced to move in part because of how bad Six Stadium was. Now, normally you could think, well, if they're able to build a new stadium like the Kingdom or like something like that, they could play at Six Stadium, but this was such a bad facility, it wasn't even adequate for temporary use, they had to get out of there immediately, so the relocation happened, and then King County and the state of Washington ended up suing the American League for breach of contract. In 1976, the AL offered to give Seattle an expansion team, and that is what became known as the Seattle Mariners. So just a little bit of history on them, the idea of playing one season. Really, the Seattle Pilots were doomed from the start due to a poor stadium situation, and by poor, even poor by 1969 standards. This is a time period where you've got teams building concrete donut multi-purpose stadiums, and the Seattle Pilots situation, the idea of taking a minor league stadium that hadn't been used for five years that was sold by a minor league team to the state of Washington who really didn't upkeep it at all to use that and then start construction and renovations in January of your first debut year, they were doomed immediately. Moving on to the next team that barely existed, it is the San Diego Clippers, who subsequently became the LA Clippers. They were considered the San Diego Clippers from 1978 through 1984. There were already attempts by the original ownership of the San Diego Clippers to relocate to Los Angeles as early as June of 1982, but at that time, the NBA denied the request for relocation, so they could have only existed for four years if that would have been approved 1978 to 1982. The San Diego Clippers were not a very successful basketball team, finishing just 25 and 57 in the 83 season, and then their final season, they finished 22 games under 500 in, in 1984. They did move to LA. The NBA was not happy about this and fined the ownership $25 million. However, they ended up dropping their case and the San Diego Clippers were no more. Now, when it comes to modern day NBA basketball potentially in San Diego, I don't think we're going to see it. It is a big long shot, but there is the idea of building a, a project called the Midway Rising, which would include an arena, you would think for either an NBA team or an NHL team. So maybe San Diego possibly might get an NBA team, but don't hold your breath on that. Moving on to the next team that barely existed, it was the 1928 Detroit Wolverines. Not the Michigan Wolverines, the Detroit Wolverines, who existed for one year. 
They did go 7-2-1 and one and finished in third place in the NFL at the time because there were no conferences. Now, this was 1928. It was a completely different time. The stadium situations were totally different. The contracts were totally different. And that's mainly the reason why Detroit only lasted a single season with the Giants owner wanting to acquire many of the Detroit Wolverines star players. He did end up buying the entire franchise and completely shut it down. So another owner just shut this franchise down, the Detroit Wolverines, after one year in existence. However, the NFL would return to Detroit in 1934, six years later, with the Portsmouth Spartans. They rebranded to the Lions, and that's how they existed. But I love their schedule, the Detroit Wolverines schedule. They began with a game against the New York Yankees. Just They played the Yankees twice. But it is really hard to compare relocation nowadays or even in the 70s or 80s to what it was in the 1920s and the 1930s when the NFL was very young. The next team that barely existed, an NHL team in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, kind of. The Cleveland Barons, yes, they existed. They were not technically located in Cleveland. They were located in a suburb outside of Cleveland, Richfield, and they played at the Richfield Coliseum for just two years. They ended up merging with the Minnesota North Stars, who now, modern day, is the Dallas Stars. This is an interesting stat on the Barons. They are the last franchise in the four pro sports to not exist, basically become a defunct franchise. They're not relocating, they're just not existing, and the NHL actually had to play with 17 teams, an odd number, in the 1978 season after the Barons merged with Minnesota. One of the main reasons the Barons only lasted two years in Cleveland was because of poor attendance, averaging under 7,000 fans in both their years and missing the playoffs finishing in last place in their division each year, although it is kind of ridiculous, the team only existed for two years. You might want to give it a little bit longer than that. When it comes to the Richfield Coliseum, it is interesting in general, more so when it comes to the NBA setup. This is just something I quickly want to comment on. If you look right behind both of the baskets, there seems to be literal box seats right behind both of them. I just thought that was interesting. You know, that is NBA arenas back in the 70s and something that's kind of unique. Also, the Richfield Coliseum had that checkerboard seating design where each seat would be a different color. That's another unique thing about it. But overall, the Richfield Coliseum was far too big based on the Barons' attendance, seating over 18,000, the biggest stadium in the NHL at the time. And with the lack of fan support and also lack of team success, the merger with Minnesota happened, the last merger in the NHL. Every other NHL team moving has been through some type of relocation, but either way, those are just four teams that really barely existed. Something like this is pretty funny to think about nowadays, but either way, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.